deja vu recording this. I'm feeling like we've been here before. The last time we had to talk about a film with this much drama, it was Don't Worry Darling a few summers back. And here we are, another huge supposed blockbuster of the summer that is completely riddled with drama and internet speculation. So what actually happened on the set of It Ends With Us to cause this supposed riff and divide between the director and star Justin Baldoni and producer and star Blake Lively? Here's your short answer of what actually happened on set. I think all of the scenes showcasing um, uh, gender-based violence, I think that was very hard for me. I almost had to step out of my body. There were a lot of times um, I mean, even thinking about it is hard. Uh, there were a lot of times where I would have to go privately into a room and just cry or shake it out and try to get him out of me and that energy out of me because uh, it's too real. And there are, uh, there, there are too many people that are the real life Lily Blooms of the world that have to deal with that every single day. And I wanted it to be as real as possible and yet uh, it was it was it was very hard uh, to shoot those scenes, um, but luckily the only way it was possible is you know I had an incredible intimacy coordinator, I had an incredible stunt coordinator, both of them were women, and then there was Blake, who honestly between those three women, they really were the ones choreographing and navigating all of those scenes because I was step I needed to play Ryle, and in those moments, to be perfectly frank, I really wasn't the director. It was those women that were uh, that were in charge. And from the beginning, I wanted all the intimate scenes to be from a female gaze. And I never wanted my bias to potentially you know, interject and go into the film. So I kind of stepped back and felt all the things and allowed myself to do the work and, um, and shook it off as best I could. How did we even find out that there was drama behind the scenes of It Ends With Us? The top layer of this onion, adapting IP is difficult. Creating something that has an existing imagination to it is a challenge because you are not inventing out of the confines of your brain into real life. You are using something that other people have attachment to to create something new. Which leads us to layer number two. Your interpretation of words is not going to match every other brain that has read those words. And then you add in layer number three, the author's involvement. And if you want to know some shit around authors being involved in the visual adaptation of their IP, just look at what's happening with Akatar and Sarah J Mass. It is such a challenge to have the initial inventor of a story involved in its adaptation to a different medium. And then we get to the point that you've probably been thinking this whole time, which is this piece of IP has a cult-like following. Now, I've never read any of Colleen Hoover's books. I cannot say I'm a part of this community, but they're very, very attached to this story. And there was a lot of excitement for years around it ends with us coming to the big screen from people that have a lot of attachment to the book and their own ideas of who should play the parts and how it should be shot. Taking on a challenge like it ends with us requires someone that understands the levels of expectation that come with all of these pieces of the puzzle. Enter Justin Baldoni and I'll let you listen to his own words about why he decided this challenging piece of IP was worth pursuing. Yeah, so in 2019, um, I was sent the book by my book agent um, and I was looking for films for our company Wayfair Studios and we had just started the studio that could speak to the human experience, that could uh, be one, commercially viable, because of course we want to make money, but more than that, could share some deep truth that maybe help a group of people feel seen or reach into somebody's heart and inspire them to make a change in their life. Because that's what matters. I mean, that's why, for me, that's why I'm in this business. That's why I want to be a storyteller, because those are the movies that impacted me. This is where our second character of the story becomes so critical to what happened on the set of It Ends With Us, Colleen Hoover. The piece of the puzzle that I really want to focus on was the fact that she personally asked Justin to play Ryle. Think of the position that this puts Mr. Baldoni in. He's here holding all the levels of expectation of creating this and adapting it and how much the fans want it to happen. And then the owner of the IP who has trusted him with this story, asks him personally to take on the role. How do you say no to that? How do you say no to that? I don't know, but he should have figured it out. <laughs> if he 
truly wanted to protect the story. He should have been able to identify that the role of Ryle in It Ends With Us is so emotionally taxing and charged that it would be impossible to be that antagonist and have such a hard emotional time and direct the film. He's responsible for all of the direction of every single shot of this project. And he is going to spend all of his emotional energy playing the antagonist. And this was your first time starring and directing. Yeah, what was I thinking? A what film. I, thinking? <laughs> I had an incredible team uh, and, and an incredible group of women um, around me. And honestly, directing myself, a lot of that had to do with, you know, the, the, the brilliance of Blake Lively and being able to act with this powerhouse and and react in real time and you know she was so generous as an actress and there were so many times where she would whisper something to me and it would really change the way that I thought about something. I'm gonna take a pause and talk about how the internet has reacted to the idea the seeds that have been planted that there could be drama on this set. I've heard that it was an issue of money and how much money Blake and Ryan specifically put in. I've heard that it's all about how Ryan came in and took over and started writing and contributing which Justin didn't seem that thrilled to answer questions about. I heard that Ryan Reynolds wrote a scene for the film. Is that true? Yeah, look, I think that I, I'm pretty sure that everybody at some point wrote something for the film. You know what that answer sounds like to me? You sing a lot too, like I, especially during the rehearsal. All sing. Sing. Yeah. It's really giving that, you guys. It's really giving that. Um, and yeah, Ryan, Blake, and I was just so grateful that there's so many collective heads going in to try to make something uh, so beautiful. Do you remember and which scene? He wrote on uh, a few scenes, I believe, and suggested a lot of things that made the movie better. I mean, the guy's a the guy's a creative genius, um, and they work so well together. And uh, and yeah, I mean, look, everything everything she touches, she made better. Lack of budget to promote the project, Justin not being able to handle that he was the villain that everyone on set was paid to hate, Colleen Hoover's involvement in the pressure of adapting the project, Blake and Justin arguing about choices being made on set. I think it's a mistake to assume that any of these problems could exist in isolation, but that's not what the internet wants from drama. The internet wants to know if Harry Styles spit on Chris Pine, yes or no. By the time that Blake Lively even enters all of this, we've established that there is a web that connects us all of drama and room for error just on the part of Justin and Colleen. Walk with me for a minute through this exercise. I'm sure you've found yourself in a position where maybe you're in the kitchen and someone's cutting a vegetable differently than you would and you're thinking, I would do that differently. Or maybe you found yourself at your job watching someone else do a project that you also have the skills for and thinking, oh, I would do that differently. And you're, you're really trying to not micromanage a situation or even manage a situation that, at all. That's not your responsibility. Wanting to make the best thing possible is innate to everyone. Blake Lively walks into the project with multiple levels of leadership. She's a producer and she's the lead of the film, which we all know has an incredible impact on everyone working on the project, including your fellow ensemble. So both Blake and Justin find themselves on the set of It Ends With Us wearing multiple hats and holding multiple positions of leadership. And although I've yet to find a soundbite of Blake talking about Justin's role specifically, we do have Jenny Slate being asked head on what it was like to work with Justin. I mean, what was that like having him be director, but also scene partner? I mean, what an intense job, like, like to have to do so many things. I just found myself being like, wow, this, I really just want to have one job at once. Like yeah. I, and, and in fact, I've often felt that way. Like I really like writing and I like it so much. And it's special to be able to be a writer, but like, yeah, I was looking around just being like, I'm good with just acting. Yeah. I, I really, I, 
I love it. I just want to do it. I feel like I've only begun. Now this is where we enter the PR of it all. We have to consider PR like a first line of defense, right? Like your PR is how people are perceiving you and receiving you. There are certain things that are absolutely non-negotiable in Hollywood. The first thing is your lead billing names, aka the people at the top of the movie poster or the call sheet on set, have to come together. Your top billing names going to the same premiere and not getting a single Getty photo together is a big red flag. It does not get worse than that. If you read any article about It Ends With Us, you will see these incredible photos that photographers were paid to take. And classically, canonically, traditionally in Hollywood, one of the top used images is the image that has all the key people in it because that's what people are gonna click on. And there's not a single photo of Blake and Justin at the premiere they both attended on Getty. I went through over 20 pages, I think it was 644 images from the premiere to verify this myself. But they have lots of pictures with other people that attended the premiere, just not just not them. This shit stinks. That does not happen by mistake or because someone showed up late to a carpet. That happens because someone did not want to be pictured. Someone made a decision that that was not going to happen. Let's pause here and just lay out the pieces of the puzzle that we're working with. A cast that's not giving straight answers to what it was like to work with their director slash one of their leads. Your two top billing names not taking a photo together at the premiere. Your director and lead actor doing separate press. It's enough to give me a headache, but we're not even close to done because this is where Blake Lively specifically comes back into the picture. It feels like there's an entirely different press tour happening with Blake on a separate talk track where Justin's interviews are coming off extremely stoic and serious about the gravity of the film. Blake's doing the funnier and lighter promotional bits. She released this kind of panel interview that they produced with these very lighthearted questions and they didn't discuss the film at all. She's encouraging people to bring their group of friends and wear like floral dresses and show up to the theater and kind of make a moment or a girls night out of going. Hello, Blake Lively here, Colleen Hoover. And It Ends With Us is in theaters now. So grab your friends, wear your florals and head out to see it. And to say that that's not sitting well on its own is an understatement. But but you add in this other narrative that Blake finds herself in. He's been contributing to press for Deadpool for the past month and has had a couple huge moments as part of the Deadpool press tour. And after Deadpool's in theaters, Blake announces that she is launching her own hair care line, which has been in the works for seven years. We've been thinking about her all summer because of this extended press tour. This moment is not hitting the way that it feels like it was planned to. Coming across like Blake's jovial bits and the funnier videos that are coming out and the funnier sound bites and appearances that she's making to promote It Ends With Us lines up more with how Deadpool is promoted versus how you talk about this specific film, which has such real themes and relation to its audience. It's just not adding up. It's not matching the way that I think audiences would have liked to have heard about the film. Here's one of the problems with this disconnect. Those press junkets and these interviews that have been trickled out over the past week are done so far in advance that at this point, as a publicist, if you're looking at how people are reacting to a talk track, to a messaging strategy, and they're not vibing with it, what straws do you have left to pull to make things better? And this is where we go into what we're going to see next, which is probably the late night slash daytime TV talk tracks. Those appearances only happen when the product that people are asking for is about to be readily available to them. You don't promote a hair care line a month before it comes out. You promote it when people can go to target themselves and buy it. You don't promote a movie before people can book their tickets to see it in the theaters. So I imagine because the response to this is so fragile, Blake might have more serious moments coming, but certainly, there's still a chunk of this that is going to emerge that's going to feel the exact same because it was all recorded before this immense amount of feedback about the disconnect was even registered. Understanding how to unpack those messages and pull out the actual gems is how we get to the truth of what happened on the set of It Ends With Us. It's true that Blake Lively took on a director role on set because Justin himself could not handle 
doing the incredibly emotional work of playing Ryle and directing that set. It's true that Justin Baldoni was very uncomfortable when asked about Ryan Reynolds' involvement in the film. When the cast was asked about what it was like to work with Justin, they couldn't give straight answers. Justin Baldoni probably shouldn't have said yes to playing Ryle in the first place because of how impossible it is to hold the weight and expectation of this huge property and do the emotional work that that character requires. Let's get real for a second though. When you can't direct your own movie because you agreed to do too much and you're paying the emotional consequence of it, that's gonna cause some drama. When you bring your husband to set to promote your movie and rewrite scenes for it, it's probably gonna rub people the wrong way. There's not just one thing that went wrong on this set and there's not just one way to interpret the drama. Sometimes making a movie like this that is innately going to be difficult and challenging ends up being difficult and challenging. Wow. 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 I don't think that this is a Don't Worry Darling 2.0. I think this is a project that was always set up for failure. It's clear to me that this project could never hold the weight of expectation that was required of it. So the story ends with this. It ends with us. It's not about one bad actor or one bad decision. It's about a whole whack of what we expect from Hollywood, which is a lot of people have a lot of ego, rightfully so. And when it's their name and their image attached to a project, no matter how destined for failure or success it is, they want to make things in the best way they possibly can. But what's next for With Ends With Us is more interesting maybe than what's happening now because Justin Baldoni is out. He said that for the sequel, Blake Lively is more qualified to direct the story than he is and that he is taking a vacation. And that really does tell you where all of this lands. It'll be interesting to see if Blake actually decides to go for the sequel or if this will be the end of It Ends With Us. There are so many scripts I'm writing right now about what happened with the Twisters press tour and how brisket really made Glenn Powell the superstar he always wanted to be. Timothy Chalamet and the new movie A Complete Unknown and why I think it's going to win him an Oscar and how his team has been working on this for like the past 10 years. I'm so excited to film these and get them to you over the next few weeks. But for now, let me know kind of how this is sitting with you and if it's impacting your perception of the movie at all. I will see you next time. Now it's back to scrolling on TikTok. Also, can we talk about Blake's hair care line? Cause like, anyway, I'll see you in the next one.